Welcome to the second part of the Firmament Model presentation. Here we're going to lay out what the Firmament Model is and what the nature of the world actually looks like when we apply the Firmament Model. So the question, what is the true nature of the world? So we're going to start with an hypothesis, A and a hypothesis B, which basically state a successful, most accurate model of the world and its creation will utilize the KJV, which is the King James Version, as the most fundamental source of truth. In hypothesis B, the Fermat model method, a concept derived from the KJV will provide a framework and define the world in its creation because it's most firmly rooted in the KJV. So those are the two hypotheses, and then we're going to apply those hypotheses, and then we're going to lay out the principle. So the Fermat model is a theory of the observable world, which is founded in a biblical concept known as the firmament. The firmament acts as a Rosetta Stone, and that the world and its phenomenon is extrapolated from it. And it also serves as its chief cornerstone. The firmament model is unique in that it operates and defines itself from a methodology called the firmament method. Firmament method is a data and truth qualifying process which filters and prioritizes knowledge based on four principles. This method is designed to provide a clear guidelines when defining and characterizing our current world system and its creation. So to summarize it, what we're trying to do here is determine what the nature of our world looks like based on the Bible. Um, please keep in mind that this is not flat earth and it is not spinning ball earth. It is literally taking what the Bible says from a literal standpoint and illustrating what the world looks like if we were to apply what the Bible says. All of these are four principles of applying the Bible in a literal way. So we got four principles. There's the cornerstone principle, the six-day principle, and the occurrence principle and the Bible science principle. I'm going to try to briefly explain what these are, and then we're going to get to what the Bible actually says about the nature of our world, and um, let's get to it. So the cornerstone principle just simply says that the firmament is the cornerstone and preeminent concept where all other concepts must be aligned. Just like the cornerstone of a house, um, basically, you want, if you the, 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 the more accurate you set that cornerstone, the more you can trust that the rest of the structure, as long as it's aligned to that cornerstone, will also be accurate. And so when you look at the Bible and apply the firmament as the cornerstone when trying to define your worldview, and if as long as everything else aligns to it, you start to see an actual an accurate structure of the world. The next pr principle is the six-day principle. This is basically um, the second most important concept, and that is when you define the world, the six days of Genesis um, are the most important things that must be um, defined, and all other things, all other concepts and principles must be aligned to. So you have the firmament. Firmament is also part of the sixth day, and so when you're going to define anything else in terms of the nature of the world, these must be defined first and everything else is superseded by these principles. These are the most important. After these, we have the occurrence principle, which is basically the principle that once we have those first two concepts um, set, then we can look at the firmament and as it, the secondary firmament concepts, which are the 15 instances where the firmament is mentioned. And so... The reason for this is that the firmament is very explicitly defined in the six days of creation. However, when you look at the 15 other instances where the firmament is mentioned in the Bible, there's a little there's a little more interpretation. Um, so what this does is as long as you have the firmament in the six days of Genesis defined first, then we can define what the 15 other instances of the firmament mean as long as they fit the cornerstones, which are the firmament and the six days of creation. Now, when you do it that way, it makes it very easy to extrapolate what these other instances of the firmament mean. Okay. After this, the last most important principle is the Bible science principle, which is basically utilizing the scientific method and applying it to the Bible. It's as simple as that. And so it just says as long as we adhere, as long as the scientific method adheres to the first three principles, then we're going to utilize the scientific method. Um, and it's really as simple as that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to apply this, these principles and we're going to build the nature of the world. And so at first I might see a little bit cumbersome when you see the notes, but we are literally going to form a detailed picture of the world and what it looks like if we were to the, if we were to apply the Bible, more specifically the King James Bible, from a little, literal perspective. 
So when we look at the beginning, okay, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So we got in the beginning God created heaven and the earth. Um, so when we look at that, some of the notes you want to take is we got heaven and earth. Um, we have God's re one thing you should always consider is that God's reality precedes our reality. So before everything was created, there was an existence. This also leads to the understanding that we do live in a multi-dimensional reality. Just based on that alone, we see already two dimensions, God's pre-existence and then creation. It does not say that God created himself when he created our world. He already existed. So that right there told, tells us we have a multi-dimensional reality. Also, it, it agrees with um, some people call it gap theory. I wouldn't, I wouldn't really go as far as saying it's gap theory, but there is a pre-time Earth age. And keep in mind that we, to, to define that in our time would not make sense. So when, when, when there could be, you know, time is measured by the, you know, this, the, what's the word, the sun rotating around the Earth. So when, when there wasn't even a sign before the first day, time could take on something that we can't even fathom so there is something um pre-time to our earth age and so that kind of when people talk about billions and trillions of years well we can't kind of rule that out be well first of all you really can't you can't label like that because those are based on our world but there was some semblance of time or whatever god would define that before he even created the world and we as humans can't pretend that we understand that okay so then we look at the earth was without form and void so we hear a lot about dark matter preterminate matter um pre-light well there's some validity to that so we bible christians should not discount that because be god was before um the earth and the bible also says the earth was without form and void and we're going to kind of uh we're going to get a little more specific on that a little bit later. So, and then it says, darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now we see the emergence of our multidimensional universe, the 3D plane. Okay, the Bible lays this out. We, 3D is length times width times depth. We're going to kind of lay that out visually. And then we got Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now we have the Spirit of God is the first motion and cause, at least in our world, um, the spirit it kind of reveals the spirit as the fourth dimension and really when you look start looking at the basics of what we're made of water spirit and motion now this is just what the bible says okay moving on so when we look when we apply this darkness was upon the face of the deep we think about this this is the kind of this is what we would get if we apply that principle because a face a face is a front or a surface of an object a face is a, and you, and to get a face, you have to have a length and you have to have a width. Okay. So then when we add D, okay, going or being a long way down from the top or a surface or being of a particular distance from the top to the bottom. There we got depth. Now we got 3D. Okay. That's the beginning of our 3D universe. This is what the Bible says. This, this would define what a face looks like. Okay. The face would not, unfortunately, look what a globe is. At least how they're giving it to us. So this is the basic structure. If we just take the Bible from its most literal standpoint, this is kind of what we're looking at. So let's go. We're going to look at day two. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So light and darkness. God said, let there be light. And there was light. So we got the first sound. We got the first light light created by sound god saw the light that it was good and god divided the light from the darkness we got the divisible light the light spectrum okay god called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day now we got the separation of light 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 shines in the darkness so when we look at that simply here we go we got the this kind of looks like a yin and yang or whatever it's interesting how a lot of things in reality are versions of the truth but this is all said in creation so it's all said in genesis this is day one okay so day two the big one the firmament 
God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. So the firmament in the midst of the waters, we have it as an, an, an uninstalled, like a, just like how you would have clay that hasn't been formed. And then it says, let it divide the waters from the waters. That's what its function. It has a function. It divides waters from waters. And God made the firmament, divided the waters which are under the firmament from the waters which are above. The firmament was so. God made the firmament. He installed it. He divided the waters which are under the firmament from the waters which are above the firmament. Post installations waters are now are above and below the firmament. God called the firmament heaven, and in the evening and the morning were the second day. Firmament equals heaven. So when we put this in a drawing, we're just going to look something like this. So we have the firmament. We have waters above the firmament, waters below, and the firmament's in the midst of it. Hasn't been installed. Hasn't been stretched. And then... When he divided it, he goes and he waters above the firmament and waters below the firmament. And the Bible always also talks about and defines what's called the open firmament. It's different. It's something that's specifically called the open firmament. So when we apply the first principle of the 3D world, and then we add the firmament, and then we're going to get something that looks kind of like this. Okay, then we get day three. Um, water and land. God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And so let the waters under the heaven be gathered again into one place. Result of the firmament insulation. Let the dry land appear. Water separation process. Okay. God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called the seas. And God saw that it was good. God called the water the seas. God said, let the earth bring forth grass, herb yielding seed. And the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And we get the first slide. So when we add these things to this, we're going to get something like this. So we got the firmament, we got the 3D, we got land. Okay, pretty. This looks pretty consistent to what the, our world looks like, just with our own eyes. Day four, lights in the firmament. Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven, divided day from the night. Um, let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. God's timepiece, God's watch, you could say. Um, God made two great lights, a greater light to rule a day, lesser light to rule a night. We got the sun and the moon. Sun rules the day, moon rules the night. And the sun, moon set in the firmament. Okay, so here we go. Now we're starting to see something like this. Pretty straightforward, okay. Um, day five. So we got the waters bringing forth abundantly, waters bring forth, um, and the fowls that may uh, uh, fly above the earth and in the open firmament of heaven. That's the key, open firmament. It defines it more specifically because it's something that's different. And then we got God created whales and every living creature after their kind. Um, that's another topic, but still. It does matter. So we have the animals. Okay, we got the moon inside. There we go. Pretty consistent with what we see with our own eyes, which also establishes um, the scientific method, things that we can observe. We can observe this. This does look consistent. Um, we just need to trust God. That's the problem. We're not trusting God. We're trusting other people. Day six, let the earth bring forth. God said, let the earth bring forth every creature after its kind, cattle and creepy thing. Beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And so you can keep going here. Basically, we have man, all the creeping things. Um... Yeah, so, yeah, here we go. All right, now we also, now we apply also what we had initially, right? We had that division of the light, okay? We have kind of like the more root structure of the earth. We have this, okay? We have this, and this is basically simply the nature of the world according to the Bible. It's as simple as this. That you, I, you can't make it more simplified. And then we could take it here. Okay. We apply it all together. And we get something like this. This is what the Bible tells us. This is if you just take the Bible literal. You take Genesis and you take the firmament. This is what you get. And that's pretty consistent with a lot of the, lot of um, what the, I would say the flat earthers get. But the problem with the flat earthers here is that, look. There is roundness. The earth was a structural thing. <laughs> so there is some, um, there is a globe nature to our earth. Now, is our earth stable? Yes. When you go outside, if no one told you about any of these theories, you would not think that you are moving. You would think that you're still. 
you would have to apply some kind of uh, some outside information to ever think you're moving. And the Bible, so when you but when you look like this, it is kind of like it is kind of like a middle ground between the glow bird and the firmament. And also, we see it is right here. It is not flat. If you look at the the, the first part of the presentation, it's not flat. And there's nothing about it that's flat. There's nothing here that is flat. Now I get it. They might say, "Oh, you're being a little bit too nitty." But when you when you're talking about something as fundamental as the nature of our world, you have to you have to look at it and be very specific. You can't just take certain liberties, like, "Oh, it's kind of flat." No, that would be if you were debating. It would be the first thing they say is define flat. How is it flat? It's not. Also, they're not applying a firmament. Firmament was part of creation, Genesis. And it's a structural thing. It creates the water. From, it's, it takes away the waters from above, from the waters below. Now, what this presentation is really applies so much are the fifteen other instances where we talk about the firmament. It talks about the earth is its foot is God's footstool. Here we go. Okay. Um, so there's really shouldn't be any disagreement in here. I mean, this is. It, it, I think the real problem is how we have um define um it's, it's what we're using to define this why would we use flat earth why and why would we but see so but there but it has portions of the truth same with the spinning ball earth there is a ball element to this there is a dome okay but it, it, it it's, it's a perversion of the truth because it says we spin no it's the sun and the moon so that is really almost like I feel like intentional to really get people to never come to the truth. It's kind of like Republicans versus Democrats. When you're forced to pick a side, we all lose instead of just doing what's right. And so another interesting takeaway. So we see this. Um, and then we. So when you look at if you look up the Big Bang, uh, I think I just got this from Wikipedia. It's funny because it's got a version of truth. Look at this. We do this, and then we do this, this, and this, or this, are not that far off. We're not. It's it's just kind of another perversion. There is some truth. I don't like the term being bang because there's it's a, there we go again. The way to define it is misleading. These are all kind of perversions of the truth. But when you look at the Bible, the Bible is true. But the problem with the Bible is you need to have a connection of God and you need to have faith. And, and But once you do, all this does make sense. And so even the science of it does make sense to a certain degree. You know, when you look at billions of years and stuff, it's almost like trying to quantify the spiritual world and with a calculator. The calculations just go haywire because it's not... It, it, is it's a this a different um it's a different dimension so you talk about billions of years well that doesn't really if you think about the human mind you can't really quantify that in a realistic way no one knows what billion years looks like people live here what 80 years if they're lucky billions of years you know how much ridiculous amount of time but when you understand that god existed before time okay well then how do you quantify that what's the What's the time scale of that? I don't know, but you'd probably get some calculations like billions or trillions of years. But like I said, these are perversions of the truth. If we just stick to the Bible, King James Version specifically, it lays out right here where so-called the big scientists kind of get us. This is their image. It is kind of similar. So lastly uh, here, what I wanted to take away is, um, let's see here, I can't really read this. Let's see if I can bring it down a little bit. It says, the heavens and the earth declare the glory and the firmament show with his handiwork. That's Psalms 19.1. Sorry.